are watching Sun TV, broadcasting to the world from studios in Providenciales, in the beautiful by nature Texas and Caicos Islands. Sun TV, your source for real news as it happens. UK Secretary of State William Haig calling for Governor Rick Todd, Attorney General Hugh Shepard, and Chief Financial Officer Hugh McGarrell Groves to be recalled. And a strongly worded four-page letter which was dated February 10, 2013, Premier Ewing noted that the beautiful by nature Turks and Caicos Islands has a bright future, but the current Governor, Attorney General, and CFO who remain from the interim administration are obstacles in the way of prosperity. According to Premier Ewing, the three officials do not enjoy the trust, confidence, and support of the people of the Turks and Caicos Islands. Therefore, they should be recalled and replaced by unbiased individuals who are better suited to work with a democratically elected government, the business community, and local community. This, the Premier added, will ensure that all stakeholders will have a fresh start at governing the Turks and Caicos Islands in the best interest of our people. Dr. Ewing noted that many of the current wrongful acts that are being committed by the Governor and Attorney General are being done contrary to the stated principles and ideals of our Constitution and international law of human rights. He added that some of these acts are being committed under the cover of the Constitution the Premier stated during the period of the interim administration, the governor became comfortable to the dictatorial style of rule. He added, however, that in the presence of the newly elected government, the governor and other remaining officials from the former administration, the attorney general, the chief financial officer, are reluctant to facilitate the transition of governments back to the people of this country. He said there are blatant acts of justice for sale, while many well-known expatriate developers have secured their freedom from prosecution by mandatory exchange under the pretense of civil recovery. The Premier also said it is quite evident that the Governor is deeply involved with the day-to-day -day operations of the SIPT, therefore their judgment is impaired. Leading car rental company Avis is constructing a new facility on Airport Road which is expected to be completed in 10 weeks and provide a major economic boost to the downtown area. Gail Aquino, owner and CEO of Avis, told Sun TV that his company acquired the property opposite Airport Hotel from government as part of a land swap. Avis is currently operating from the back of the Providenciales Airport but it will have to move to facilitate expansion works. Sun TV caught up with Aquino and he gave us a comprehensive update on the new Avis property. From, you know, Avis has been behind me uh, in the old, in the airport area there for some years now. Mm -hmm. and, and with the government wanting to expand the airport, they've, they purchased a bunch of land behind that area of which ours was a part of. And we, we took a land swap with our old building with this government property here for for a new opera and this is would be where our where our new operation will be headquartered um, operating between here and the air, including our counter at the airport we should be we should be in here in 10 weeks so we, we expect to get in here in the next next eight or nine weeks so it's going to be a fast job we're going to get this done because we need to move out of the other uh, our other location because it's since all the roads have been cut off, it's 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 uh, it's really hard to operate back in there. We can hold a couple of hundred cars right here. We have the, the property goes all the way down to the to the back road to Q Town. So uh, uh, the the back half of this building will be uh, area for car cleaning and uh, and ma general maintenance and uh, and storage in the back. And the front the front will be operated as your your, your basic car rental uh, operation as in any other any other location. Well, the cost of the project, including property, will be um, should be uh, in the area of six hundred to seven hundred thousand. Well, one of the one of the, the the important things is that it gives us a chance to to expand the operation by having other you know other uh, um, more space for our rental sales agents between here and the airport. Um, but the key is for for us to better service 
the customer when they come in. So we're going to run, we'll be running golf carts between here and the airport for transporting uh, customers from uh, uh, when they get out of uh, when they get out of the plane and then they uh, and they want to get their car. So we'll be transporting them back and forth on on uh, with golf carts to this location. They can pick up the cars and drive them from here, or they can drop them off here and then we we'll, we we'll deliver them back to the airport. So we're trying to make we're trying to create more of a, uh, um, a customer friendly. Uh, experience for for, uh, for our uh, rental car customers and our tourists. Avis has been here, well, it was the first, uh, I brought Avis in probably uh, 12 years ago. The first, uh, the, the first franchise, U.S. franchise, that's locally owned and operated. So our oil company is, is, owned, is, is locally owned. Well, one of the most important things we have with, with having a franchise such as Avis is the worldwide uh, uh, recognition. And they have the largest, uh, they have the largest reservation operation out of all the rental car companies. They operate uh, central reservations, and then and, uh, and and including their advertising, we get the benefits of the advertising. But they advertise for the location, and they make they will make the the um, experience for the customer wanting a car where they feel comfortable. It's like being in, in, in North America or Europe. They feel comfortable when they make those reservations. They make them through the main websites and then when they come here they get the we want to try and have them have the same experience they would get when they're renting any other place in the world. One of the important things was that in our conversations with government regarding our design here, we we came back a couple of times with different designs because we wanted to and you'll see when the when it's completed it's it's the buildings being designed to Avis specifications around the world. So this building is, will be similar to a building you might see in, in um, uh, another country. And because it's done, the design was done by, uh, the general design was done by Avis corporate headquarters. And then we brought the design down here and gave it to our local architects and they adapted it for the, for the Turks and Caicos market, a building and, and, and whatnot. So it's the recognition that when a customer, a rental customer arrives here, he feels comfortable that it's, that it's a, he's gonna get the same service and, that he's gonna get in other places around the world. And I think that's really what's important. And, and when we worked with government on this, what we did was we came back and forth a few, a few times and we kind of changed how we're, we're entering in here. We're putting a little, we're putting some um, uh, access roads to better facilitate airport road. And, and government's uh, conversation with me was that they want to upgrade this area here. They feel it's really important that that this strip is is uh, is done nicely because that's what tourists see when they first come in. So so our discussion has been uh, with them trying to trying to provide something that's upscale, and and that's what I think we've achieved by this building. Grand Turk North MP George Lightburn is confident and excited following his victory in the election petition case. On Tuesday, February 12th, the Chief Justice dismissed the case which was brought by Derek Grohl of the People's Democratic Movement. The Chief Justice ruled that there was no evidence of fraud or deception in the November 9th election and he added that allegations which amounted to criminal offenses must be proven beyond reasonable doubt. During a press conference on Wednesday, Lightburn was asked for his reaction to the results, and here's what he had to say. Well, there was, there was never any doubt in my mind as to what the outcome, you know, would have been. You know, I, I am a believer. I grew up in the church. God has never failed me yet. And anyone that finds it necessary to bring false allegations against me, it's a matter for them and Jesus. Yes. Thursday, February 14th was Valentine's Day, and as usual, there was a lot of love in the air. CIBC First Caribbean Bank took the opportunity to make their customers feel extra special by treating them to snacks, drinks, music, and some banking giveaways. Branch manager Joy Callender explains. As you know, today is Valentine's Day. It's a day of love. And First Caribbean is giving love to its customers through refreshment music and we are also promoting our Visa credit card which is now aligned to a rewards program where you can have rewards for your flights, hotel, cash back and also 
travel. It's on all airlines. Yeah. And you also get points when you stay in the various hotels around the world. Our credit card is used throughout the entire world. And today, if you apply for a credit card with us and it's approved, you get an extra 500 points. And today, when you use your credit card at any merchant, you get double bonus points. So it's no better way than to spend your Valentine's Day than with First Caribbean International Bank. Again, we want to welcome all of our customers. We want to assure them that we, we will continue to give them efficient service and also look at how we can support them in their various needs. I'm Todd Dafferlin. Thanks for watching Sun TV and join us again tomorrow when we bring you more news as it happens directly to your computer or mobile device.